Okay, here's the Close Combat series I was going to showcase a bit of. It's an RTS series. Uh, the first game, Close Combat 1, was released all the way back in 1996, I believe. It was played that I played it quite a bit, played it to death. Uh, focuses on realism. Most of the games were set in the European theater of World War II. There's five main games in the series. Uh, again, it focuses highly on realism. Units don't really have health, per se. They all have limited amounts of ammunition, they all have stamina, they all have mental and physical uh, limits as to what they can take as well. They can become tired and winded or fatigued, they can panic as this guy is here. They can be pinned down and suppressed by enemy fire, they can rout, that sort of thing. Uh, Close Combat was pretty much the first game to incorporate that kind of realism in an RTS. This game centers on the 29th Infantry Division's advance from Omaha Beach to San Paolo, I believe. There's quite a few different maps, and you can play through most of them in the campaign. The different terrain types that you might find, like buildings, uh, hedgerows, uh, rivers and trenches, foxholes, bunkers, stone walls, all have set amounts of cover from varying different angles. Uh, cover and concealment as well. Uh, you may not be always able to immediately see the enemy unless you get close enough. One of the primary objectives is taking uh, so-called victory locations here. Another thing Close Combat did that I really like was uh, detail its weapons quite effectively. Um, they all have their own weight, muzzle velocity, length. Uh, they have accurate armor penetration capabilities, range, that sort of thing. And as you can see here, soldiers have quite a few different stats and they're more or less randomized for each soldier who is randomly created. Uh, physical and mental condition, leadership, morale, experience, very, very detailed for a game. The second game focuses more on Operation Mar Market Garden, uh, the failed uh, attempts to take key bridges in the uh, West European sector in World War II. The while I really enjoyed the first close combat game, the second one just felt a little bit... I'm not sure how to, how to explain it. Not quite as serious, not quite as polished, not quite as easy to jump in and out of. It added the ability to give orders to units while you were uh, in placing them in the deployment mode, which is kind of where you just set up everybody before you jump into battle. Also add the ability to uh, requisition and kind of form your own unit pool. Which is a good and a bad thing. The first game you could get, you know, randomly you could be awarded six or seven tanks for a certain battle when you were reinforced, but to do that here you have to really spend a lot of different uh, requisition points, and you may not ever be able to do that. The entire series is kind of known for its attention to detail. The, f the first game actually came with this big uh, couple hundred page book which detailed all of the mechanics of the game, had um, very specific uh, lists of which vehicles and weapons and uh, equipment each side, either the Americans or the Germans, used, you know, down to how much armor the rear or underbelly of a Tiger tank had, or the, the amount of shells a Sherman 75mm tank would carry. 
it also had, you know, kind of a brief synopsis of um, World War II as well, which I thought was kind of interesting. Uh, they really went the extra mile to ensure that their game was uh, very detail-oriented and about as realistic as you could get. Another thing new to the second game, while I'm at it, is the ability to uh, negotiate a ceasefire, which is a good and a bad thing. It's good because you can kind of prevent your side from taking any additional losses, but uh, it's always best to try and drive the enemy completely off the map whenever possible. Close combat does include melee attacks, as you can see there. Kind of a uh, rare to actually see them occur. Individual soldiers can be uh, awarded medals, which generally raises their morale and uh, makes them a bit better of a combatant. It's also just kind of interesting to see a neat little touch. The fourth game in the series uh, takes place during the Battle of the Bulge. The third, which I never really was too interested in, takes place uh, on the Eastern Front with the Germans fighting the Russians. Uh, the formula is more or less the same. It still keeps the unit requisition factor, adds the ability to uh, access air, artillery, or uh, naval gunfire support, I believe. Oh no, that's the fifth game. Air, mortar, or artillery support for the fourth game. You can also select more than one unit at a time, kind of, you know, uh, drawing a, a square or circle around the units you wish to select, which is a very welcome addition. And it also lets you set movement waypoints, so instead of the unit just trying to take the shortest path possible all the time to be to the target, um, you can have them sneak around and flank. Another very, very welcome addition. The fifth game kind of returns to its roots, um, almost a reimagining of the first game taking place uh, in, during Operation Normandy, uh, the invasion of France. Also came with a battle editor, you can see here, kind of lets you set up your own campaign, your own operations, um, lets you specify how much ammo, supply of the weather, uh, whether or not both sides will have air, artillery, or naval gunfire support. Also lets you view and track the uh, the progress of individual soldiers. You can see this guy here has apparently won a, is that a... It's either a Medal of Honor or a Distinguished Service Cross. I think it's a Medal of Honor. At the end of the com campaign, you can have some troops with insane um, kill counts here. Uh, let's see if I can find them. There's one tank who has taken out, I think, at least a couple hundred. Like this guy here. This one tank has taken out at least 300 uh, German soldiers and about 10, about 8 or 9 tanks. More than that, because sometimes they don't get credited for the kills they do. But just ridiculous. Um, they. The Germans should really be terrified of that tank by now. Maybe launching a, an entire operation just to get rid of it. But once again, you can see you can uh, remove units and place them with ones you would uh, want instead. But... The graphics have improved a little bit, not much. Uh, but then again, the series was never really about the uh, the graphics. It's all about the gameplay. A lot of people have saying the game series is very slow and very boring, but I find it's actually quite tense. Uh, it rewards a slow, deliberate gameplay pace, thinking out everything, trying to imagine what your opponent is uh, planning at the same time. 
and stress is adaptability because I can almost guarantee you that your initial plan is not going to go as planned. Other than that, not much to say. Uh, pretty good solid series in all. There are uh, other games in the series such as, such as the Modern Combat, which, to be honest, I'd recommend you avoid.